Welcome back, everybody. All right, let's talk a little bit about HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, uh, and how it relates to websites, and how JSBin really works. So the first thing is that the reason why we're using JSBin is that when we type something in, we can see it in real time in this output here, and we can run any JavaScript with this little button here, and we'll get to that very shortly, don't worry. So what I like to tell beginners is I like to tell that HTML displays everything on the website. For example, it displays images, it displays, um, it displays links, it sets up the static parts, meaning the parts that don't change the internet. Um, and what CSS does is it styles everything, so if you wanted to change the text or the font or something like that, you use CSS. And what it does is it takes the pressure away from the HTML and it set, puts it off its own file and it makes stylizing your website a little bit easier. Now JavaScript adds in the function, which is actually really important. And if you're into HTML5 stuff, uh, that's exactly what a lot of JavaScript can do for you, all right? So let's take a look at HTML first. And I'm just gonna give you a very small crash course in this. Uh, the reason is, is just because it explains JavaScript a little bit better. So what you can do is you can type in two uh, paragraph tags, which is the greater than and less than sign. And then you can type in some text like this is awesome, like that. And then you can type slash p with the two greater than and less than signs around it. And you'll see in the output here that says this is awesome. Now if you add in another word here, for example, really awesome, like that, uh, you can see that um, you can see that it is uh, it changes automatically. So you'll also notice that there is a space here, uh, and that's because it really looks like this, but the window makes it shorter. All right, so it's really awesome. I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of that. Now, what CSS does here is if you type in p, and you type in a curly bracket and push enter, you'll see that two curly brackets uh, come up. And uh, the reason why uh, this is is that anything within this code uh, relates to the p tag. So we can change the font, we can change the color, etc. And how we do that is you just change color, and then let's change it to red, and you put a semicolon at the end of that. Now, it's really important uh, that you learn the two topics here. Uh, you can see that p uh, is a block of code, and we can add in a whole bunch of other things. We can change the font, etc. But you'll also notice that there's a semicolon at the end of this line. And you'll also notice that there are two curly brackets. This is super important, especially in JavaScript and a lot of other programming languages. The curly brackets uh, make sure that this is a block of code. So if I type in something out here, you see it won't work. And sometimes what it will do is it will uh, pop up an error. Now, CSS and web development is a lot less error prone, meaning that you can get away with a lot more. And that's actually really cool. Now, uh, the console here is uh, if you were to put in something with JavaScript here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just get rid of the console, and I just want to um, show you uh, a little bit of JavaScript. And you can go, you can type this in. We can go alert colon uh, and uh, a bracket um, quotes, and you can type in whatever you want. In this case, I'll just type in pop and um, a bracket again and semicolon. All right. Now you'll see that um, when I do this, you'll see that there's a warning down here. And the reason why there is a warning down there is because this isn't uh, complete. Now, for the most part, every line needs a semicolon after that. Now, there are certain lines that don't need a semicolon, but uh, for any line that you're telling the computer to do something, it needs a, a semicolon. So we're going to go ahead and put a semicolon there. And when you're first starting out, the semicolon is the number one thing that beginners forget. So put in that semicolon there. And there are times where we don't put in a semicolon, and I will make those apparently obvious to you. All right. The last thing we need to do is you just need to run with JS, and you'll see that this thing comes up and it says pop. And that's exactly what we asked it to do. So uh, programming is uh, telling the computer to, hold, to do a whole bunch of things. So we're telling the computer to literally just put a, up a window that says pop. We can type in something else like awesome, like this, and it just says awesome. That's pretty cool. Now, what we're doing here is, again, we just tell the computer to do things. Now, there are some times where you add in two um, backslashes like this, and th what this is is that this is what is called a comment. Now, a comment is something that you can just write in here, and it can remind you uh, what to do. So what we've done, told the computer to do is to alert the user with a pop-up. 
That's all we've done, okay? And so if I were to write this in pseudocode or code that doesn't necessarily work, that's what we've, uh, that's what we've uh, done here. Now, if you can think of the code, if you can think of something to do, like I need the computer to do this, uh, and you can find the corresponding code, that's really all you need to work with in, um, with coding here. Now, the other thing we can do is, again, before CSS um, was invented, before, you know, JavaScript was really a thing, you could actually add this all within the HTML document. So the HTML document is really kind of the the main area of which everything happens. These are just separate files. And if we were to do this off of uh, JS bin, we'd have our HTML document and we would call the CSS and JavaScript to be like uh, several different uh, text files. And all we would do is we would call it in here. But the way we do that is we type in script, okay? And I'm just gonna push enter a couple times. And then the greater than and less than sign, because that's just how you make tags uh, in, um, in HTML and we're going to do slash script and what I'm going to do is I'm going to push control X or command X if you're on a Mac and we're going to put that script in there. Now what this does is that this essentially runs the JavaScript. We've made a little section within the HTML to run JavaScript. Normally it's in a different file but you can run it. So if we run this here it says awesome and if we change this we can change this to anything we want. We can change it back to pop we can change it to your name. You can change it to whatever you really want to. And we're going to go run with JavaScript, okay? And if I take this alert pop, uh, cut, and paste it right in here, uh, and get rid of these script tags, you'll see it's exactly the same thing. So I'm just going to go run with JS. It's pretty simple. All right, so we have the alert pop there. So you can run it within the HTML document. You can even run CSS. Uh, you can put the style points within the tags here, and you can, learn, you can run the JavaScript within the HTML. But generally, we do it in different areas here. All right, I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.